Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Halfway Healthy Show. I'm here with my boy, Corey, and we're here to talk some shit, talk some nonsense. Hopefully, uh, 2 to 3% health pops in here somewhere along the way, Mostly and then we'll be doing our job. Talk shit. That's right. How you doing, buddy? Dude, it's good to see I'm you. I'm hanging in there, but I feel like uh, I feel like we'll get to the topics of what I really want to say here shortly. Mm, you have some juicy, juicy stuff for us, dude. This, this midday. <laughs> I guess let me just let me just throw out the spoiler. I'm hurting today, man. I'm hurting. Oh, I know what you're talking about, and I want to get into it because I told you before the podcast we were talking, and I said, "Shut the fuck up and let's talk about it." We don't. Yeah, ever since we started doing a podcast together, I can't remember the last time I've had a genuine conversation with you because every time I try to tell you something big in my life, you say, ah, "It's content. Save it for content. The pod. It's content." Don't talk about it. Don't tell me anything about your life. I want to hear about it on the on the podcast. Seriously, everyone gets all the juicy details as soon as you do. So I yeah. tried my hand at an outdoor activity, which I typically don't do. I tried mountain when, biking. When you look at Corey, you think this guy is an outdoorsman. And then when you really look at Corey, not an outdoorsman. When you but really get to know me. You can be. And you realize, you can be. You realize this big this big boy just wants to snuggle on the couch with his cats. Maybe light a nice boy, candle. Watch a movie. You're a candle guy, aren't you? you I remember whenever we, whenever we got the studio and you were out here, we, you spent a good couple couple minutes in the candle aisle pick, making sure you picked the right one. That place smelled like shit. It did smell really bad. We needed a Anyways, really nice candle. Crisp. Mountain biking. How did it go? Mountain biking. I, I learned a lot of valuable lessons today. First and primarily is uh, I don't think mountain biking's for me. And that's okay. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Well, let's let's go let's go to the beginning because I remember so for people that don't for people that don't know, I don't think we've really talked about what our hobbies are. Who cares? Anyways, I'm a big mountain biker. I love mountain biking. Corey texted me probably like three weeks ago, four weeks ago or something like that, and said, I think I kinda want to get into mountain biking. What <laughs> bike should I buy? Try and I said try. Yes. Try his hand in mountain biking. I said, pump the brakes. I said I would maybe start off like kind of, we kind of started off by saying I would, you know, probably would get a hard tail versus a full suspension. So for people that don't know, it's one that has like the fork in the front, the shock in the front, but not in the back. They're usually cheaper. We recommend that for people, especially if they're trying out just in case they hate it, or they don't drop two grand on a bike and then realize that it's not for them. So I kind of told him that. And then he was like, what equipment do I need? And they're like, helmet, knee pads, shoes, gloves, all of the shit. And we talked about it for a while and he was like, I can't find a bike. And then I'm, and I'm like looking, I mean, I even, I don't know if I told you this, but I even got on like Facebook marketplace where you're at and was like looking at bikes to see if I could find something for you. And then we started talking on the phone and I was like, you probably should just rent because if you go, even if you spend a grand on a bike, which to get a decent bike, you're going to spend a grand. If you spend a grand and then you rode four times and you hate it, then you you're out, you know, you're probably going to get some return on your investment. But I was like, just go spend too much money on a rental, go spend 40 bucks, 50 bucks on a rental for a day. And then if you do that a couple times, you're going to pretty well know if you're going to like it or not. And it sounds I mean, like I don't really I agree with decision. most you say, like on the podcast, I'll smile and I'll nod my head. I know what to do for the audience, right. but fuck, sometimes you just say some stupid garbage, but renting the bike was one of the best things you ever told me to do. So gotcha. let me take you there. Okay. Please. We, my brother-in-law is the one who texts me about it first. Big outdoors guy lived in more or less athletic than you. Um, I guess we talked about this today. I would say less natural, naturally athletic, but mm -hmm. very, very strong, stout, beautiful, sexy, handsome, wonderful, and everything else. Sure. So we, we go out, he was able to rent a couple bikes for us and we are going out to this trail that we did adequate research on just to find out that it was shut down because I don't know the trail's too wet or something from the hurricane that came through. Um, so we're what like, were the bikes? Fuck. Do you remember? What? What were the bikes? Do you remember? Uh, Trex hardtails. Were they Roscoe's? 26s. They were 26 inch. Yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. Oh no. So, <laughs> That's not good. No, it was bad. So you guys are on little baby bikes. <laughs> so we, uh, we had to find something else. He said, oh, you know what? I think there's another trail up here. We'll just go to this other trail. Obviously, not a lot of research done in this decision, but we already had the bikes. We already had all the equipment rented, so we're just fucking going no matter what. Um, hindsight, do some research on the uh, biking trail you're going to go bike on, especially if you don't know what the fuck you're doing. 
just a, just a little piece of advice, a word of the wise. Um, we made it about uh, just over. I'm giving myself this extra, just over a half mile in, and I had already gone over the handlebars twice. Over oh. the handlebars, I'm talking like, like. Slam oh, you head. banged up. Okay, slam my head into the ground. I can't. For those that aren't on video, uh, Corey just displayed his little shiner he has above his right eye. Oh that, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. What, did you hit a tree? Did you hit a rock? What'd you, what'd you so hit? it was like a little creek. Well, I guess I can't use that excuse because it happened twice, but the first time was there was like a little creek that we had to go through. So my brother, mm-hmm. brother-in-law goes first and, uh, kind of muddies up the water a little bit. So I don't really know where I'm going, but I'm doing my best. Nor was that the reason I went down. I think I probably would have gone down anyways, but um, just (laughs) caught in between two rocks. And so Uh not only did I slam over like in the fucking cartoons, arms behind my back, flying over the handlebars, but I also got wet too. So I, uh, I committed a terrible crime in the physical therapy world and I fucking fooshed bro. And I can't lift my right arm Tell people, than, tell people what a foosh. Tell people what a foosh is. You well, give them... a foosh for those who don't know, a foosh is falling on an outstretched hand. Foosh, and uh, that is a cardinal sin in physical therapy. You do not do that because that is the quickest way to get a fracture or a wrist injury or a shoulder injury or anything like foosh. that. So, so my fucking thick ass body is spiraling towards the floor and instinctually reaches out. My shoulder jams backwards, and I can't lift my arm over 30 degrees from the side of my body. It's bad. It's not good. And uh, yeah, here I am, uh, busting my fucking balls for you coming on this pod. I can't dude, even reach I... my fucking tits because it hurts too bad. That makes me yeah. so happy. So many bad um, things. So many bad God. things. Okay, uh, so I, I, have, I have a few things. So for people yeah. that... I, I'll give a little uh, a little physics lesson too for everybody and a little describer of uh, a description of like what's out there in the mountain biking world without going into too like too much boring detail. But basically, you have three wheel sizes that are popular. Well, one used to be popular, and that's the one that Corey rode. Twenty six baby. Twenty six is a very small wheel. It's twenty six um, diameter. Either way, they're just twenty six inch, right? And then. It goes 27 and a half and it goes 29. Almost everybody rides 29s now, unless they're like doing a lot of, um, you know, a lot of tricks and things in the air. If they like to play on their bike or if they're just like shorter stature, Corey, you're a tall guy. You should have been on a 29er. No brainer. Wasn't it? 26 is wasn't it such a small, I don't even know why anybody's renting 20, allowing people to rent 26s. They just, you can't even buy those anymore. Like you can, you can, you have to go out of your way to find a 26. So that's hilarious. And that's probably, so for the physics thing, I was going to say the bigger, the diameter of the wheel, the easier it is to roll over stuff like logs, like rocks, Creek beds. And that's probably what happened. Yeah. You got the fucking tiny wheel shoved into a rock and then just, and it, they're just smaller bikes too, generally. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I just, was having a problem too, where like I tried to keep, it didn't have any like foot clips or anything like that. And mm-hmm. my toes, it was so low to the ground. My toes would drag on the ground. Like if it wasn't in the yeah. perfect position and just like, I, catch. I don't want you to ride off mountain biking because it's, it's, it is my love, but you had a rough experience. Yeah. I would love to put you on a 29er and just let you cruise knowing where you're at. Just like figuring out a place that you can actually go ride and test the waters, get on a green, do some real rollers and just have fun. I will say though, um, two things. It, you reminded me of, uh, I had a crash last, last year or, or the year before where I was a complete fucking idiot. And I, in the middle of my work day, had a patient cancel, had my bike with me and I'm like, I'm going to go hit some, hit some jumps. That's not, Getting that's more. not healthy behavior by the way. No, I hit, so I hit jumps, uh, didn't warm up. I had like 40 minutes and I was like, it's all I got. And I just parked here at this spot, these really sweet jumps. One jump was right around a corner and it was a gap jump. So I just, you had to jump it. There wasn't like a tabletop where you can just roll over. So I did a turn. And as I was turning, I hit the jump. So I was still sideways. 
and I landed with my bike at an angle and slammed my shoulder into the ground. And same situation, I got up and my arm was just hanging oh, yeah. below me. And I, I then had to go to a patient's house after that and like put on their AFO with, with, with one hand. And I was just like, I'm so sorry. I, I can't move my arm. <laughs> it just was, and I'll never do that again, but that was like a, a lesson. But one thing I'm sure you can attest to now, cause this was your, really your first, like getting, getting on a mountain bike, right? First time, like yeah. truly going mountain Daddy biking. Daddy doesn't get on bikes very much. He doesn't really get outside all too often. So the skin of hurts your, outside. Or the, the sun hurts your skin. Yeah. So it just is a rough vampire rough behavior. Be. But the, I think one thing that people always say after I go mountain biking with them or they try mountain biking for the first time is like, holy shit. I didn't realize that that was that much work, like full body. I remember whenever, whenever Ziggy, I got Ziggy into riding a little bit and he was just like, I don't think I've ever done anything that's as physically demanding on my body. Oh it yeah. Just, yeah. Like you my went arms the a little over, a little over, a little over half mile, yeah. not just a half mile. Well, yeah. And then it was, you know, I rode a little bit, you know, we decided, you know what, this trail isn't, isn't for us. Cause there was multiple trailheads there. So we thought, you know what, let's go try this other one. Cause we did some research. We looked it up online and saw that it was like a hard difficulty. We said, okay, that's a mistake. Mm. Let's go back. Let's go to like a beginner intermediate, intermediate, uh, trail. And so we rode back, made it maybe like halfway back, fucking went right over the fucking shit again, Pew! slammed my face and just laid there. And I, I rolled over. I was mm. in so much fucking pain. I was nauseous. Like I thought I the was going to vomit. The foosh was your first crash. The, fir- the foosh was the first crash. Yeah. I, so you were already kind of hesitant and then you flipped over. You probably just gave up. Dude, I like, just fucking, bo- oh, I just bombed it again, you know, because, uh, and then my brother-in-law was like, I don't, I don't really know why you did that. You know, you just, you just <laughs> fell and then you just did the same thing again. And you know what? I'm a determined young man. All right. I yeah. wanted to impress him. I want to be strong. Oh. I want to be tough. And, uh, it didn't work out for me. And I gotta say the, the fucking throbbing, I'm going to have to do some of my own research. And like, I don't know if you're the same as me, but now just having the skill base and the knowledge that we have, like you get injured and I immediately do my head to toe assessment. I'm like, okay, I'm thinking that's a good sign. Maybe I'm dead, but if I'm not dead, then I'm probably okay cognitively. And then you immediately go down the list and move my head, you know, okay, my neck's okay. Shoulder can't fucking feel anything. Can't move it. Yeah. You always start, you always start dead first and you assess like, am I dead? Yes. Have I just a good ended place to my start. life? And then you go, okay, I'm still alive. And you go back. So I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a six on the Glasgow coma scale, but yeah. so I'm at least <laughs> yeah. a five. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it was, it was bad. I did not have a great experience. So traumatizing. So my thought was, you know, to my brother-in-law, I just say, you know what? This would be a fantastic little hiking trail. We should, we should just go on our feet sometime. Maybe that's a good start for me. Yeah. Next time you decide you want to go, just send me the rental place so I can at least like look at it and help you out. But yeah, sounds like a sounds like a grand experience. Maybe whenever you come to Arkansas, I can uh, I, I can I can tow you behind me or something. Yeah, I wish rope. Oh, I wish that I could show you my fucking legs, dude. My legs are absolutely fucked. Oh man, I got even just you, hemat- even just you shimmy in your chair right now, you look like you were in a ton of pain. Oh, dude, no, that's just my shoulder, man, dude. My I just got this hematoma on the side of my leg. I'd I'd lift it up, but I, I, no no free feet pics anymore. It's 2023. Mm-hmm. You don't just show your toes on the internet for nothing. A subscription for that, baby. Exactly. So it's um you know it was an experience. I'm glad I did it. I had fun. I enjoyed the company. Fun. You didn't have fun. Don't yeah, lie. it was brutal. Don't lie to the people. So I, I actually you. sent you a. Are you able to pull up a video like quickly and easily? Yeah, kind of. What do you need? I sent you I sent you a 14 second video on Slack. And uh it kind of it act- <laughs> it accurately depicts what happened to me. And it's really yeah. funny because my brothers my brothers and I were watching the Utah Utes game last night. Big sports guy. Utes won. Who oh God, is this, fucking cares? Is and, this the Is this the Tom Segura crowd? Yes. Yes. Oh and we were making fun of this clip last night. And then this shit Ooh. happens to me today. Fucking karma, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can pull it up for the people. So this is a, and this is a clip that, um, <laughs> this, this is a uh, Tom Segura, the comedian who, uh, who also fooshed, but, um, clearly can you see it now, Corey? I, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. We'll give it a little, a little play. Ooh, his arm is fucking backwards, bro. Yeah, well, well, I don't even want to show the slow mo because it's it's gruesome. But uh, yeah, it's for people that don't that just heard it. 
um, he went to dunk a basketball on like a 10 foot goal. And his, I don't know if you know the full extent of the injury, but he, he went to plant and jump. And as he planted and jump, his quad tendon snapped, Yep, which then caused him to collapse. And then he landed on his fushed arm, which then snapped it. Yeah. He had to have major surgery after that. From what I understand. Multiple surgeries too. I think on the, he had like nerve, nerve damage on the, which is hilarious because it was just like a total basic thing. And I don't, I don't find mountain biking to be a totally basic thing, but it's like, dude, the first time you go out, you're in the first half mile you've ever mountain biked your entire life. And I fucking got sent sailing, dude, sailing. Yeah. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. So when you ask how I'm feeling, I'm throbbing everywhere and I can't consume enough Tylenol. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, I got to tell you what happened to me this week because it, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll love it. So I uh, had an experience earlier this week at Come, Come and Go, the gas station. Shout out to Derek, the uh, Come and Go attendant at the front. Fuck you, dude. Fuck um, you, dude. I, uh, I was having a, a I, was a, it was a t- I was a tired boy. Okay. It was a Tuesday. I was a tired boy. I show up and I'm like, I'm going to try a Celsius, one of those energy drinks. Never had one before. And I, I, I don't Fool. know. I, I saw you. Yeah. You just, you, you rolled your eyes. Okay. I, I've never had one. I see people drinking them and I was like, Hey, I like an energy drink every once in a while. Let me go try a Celsius. I'm a little sleepy boy. So I go and grab, I grab a Celsius. I walk up to the front. This guy's standing up there and uh, I slide my can across. He looks at me, looks down at my badge and sees that I'm a PT. And he goes, ah, uh, only, only one. You're going to be tired. He's like, or no, he said, he said, oh, only one. You're going to be tired. Then he looks down at my badge and says, yeah, I mean, after you're, you're doing all that stretching and then just like, you're going to need more than, more than one can. And in my head, I'm like fucking stretching. That's what you think I do. Just stretch people. It's like, there's a real problem with Derek for one. Fuck you, Derek. In, in the space. It's like, then it, then, uh, then I spiral to just like thinking about like, I I've had this, I've had this talk with people recently, I guess, but also just like as general in general, as like the, the physical therapy profession is like a fucking joke sometimes just like what it's, what the, the public's view is of it. It just, this guy was like, yeah, whenever you're stretching people, you're going to be tired. And I was like, ah, yeah, See, I guess you get that one, but I've gotten like massage a lot, you know, oh, when you're out there massaging people. But yeah. the truth is I hold zero out of 1000 pride over my profession like i know what i do i know that i go to work every single day i try my fucking hardest i know that i help people and that's that's fine for me but i hope like when somebody says that i just shrug it off and laugh you know yeah i don't i don't assume to know what the gas station teller does (laughs) i'm sure that they have a lot of responsibility too it's just yeah whatever just made me think like is that that's something that i'm trying to change with like with compound shit is just like trying to actually do something meaningful that's actually enjoyable as a profession in terms of like using your brain and not just being a PT that treats people post-op, even though there's a time and place for that. And there's people who are fantastic and they love that. But I also think that you get painted in a box of like, you know, that's all that they know how to do or just stretch people, you know, for sure. I mean, some stretches. Yeah. It happens to a lot of professions. So, you know, nurses, oh, they, you just give drugs. Kairos, oh, you just crack people's backs, you know, like, oh, there's a lot of professions that get lumped into something, but it actually is a, it's an interesting, um, it takes me down an interesting road. Have I talked about this on the pod with you before about the PT profession, like the happiness scores? Mm, No. Dude, I was reading this article and I, I have it somewhere in my papers. I could look it up. I can't remember exactly where the article came up. But I'm sure you could look it up. Physical therapists were found to pay, have the happiest profession. I was struggling to find a way to say that. But physical therapists in their profession were found to be the happiest. So you hear about fucking dentists and physicians and the suicide wait, rates. Wait, and wait, shit. wait. No, you did ask me like months ago. You were like, I want you to guess who has the who has the best outlook on their job or something. And my dumb ass guess like construction or something, but I don't think, Oh, you're such therapist. a fucking idiot, dude. No, no know, this was I... like new. I just found this. Oh, okay. Like, so, so I wanted to say thing. congrats on finding such a meaningful profession. The Thank study so basically had, it was just a two part study that showed, you know, does your job have high meaning? 
the fuck does that mean? So subjective. High meaning. Yeah. yeah. The, the next, and then it was like job satisfaction. So it was like nine out of 10 found that their job had high meaning and four out of five had positive job satisfaction, which was the highest profession in the fucking, in the United States at least. So hmm. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Maybe they don't work the same places that we have worked, but... Maybe they just pulled like fifty people too. Who knows? Who knows, dude? I mean, and physical I, therapists on general in general are like ha- like healthier, active, yeah, you know, people. Say, so maybe that has something to do with it. And they help people all day. They get paid a modest salary, an astronomical. Uh, dude, we're rich. Yeah, Shut the fuck yeah. up. They got a very modest salary. That would take <laughs> that would it would take you ten years of of uh, not eating to be able to pay off your student loans. But it's they would say it's modest. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably it. Right. It's like you get, you get paid a decent wage. You help people every day. Cause I, I and that was one reason, honestly, one of the reasons why I went to PT to begin with is cause like, I imagine what if I sat at a desk and decided, uh, it made sure that each Walmart was stocked with enough sausages to, to supply the customers the next day. I'm like, can you imagine doing that? Like week after week, it's like, Hey, the Vienna sausages are short again on, on, on store 47. It's like, what the fuck's going on over there with the Vienna sausages? And it's like, if that's your job, like, I just, what's the meaning behind? I'm sure people can find meaning and somebody don't give up. Some people don't give a fuck about meaning in their job, but like, I, I don't know. You know like, that if, brings up a if, good point. I'm going to look up what job has the worst satisfaction. Yeah. I mean, like if that was my, if that was my job and I had that same interaction with, with Derek, like maybe fuck you, Derek, Derek would be dead. Maybe Derek would be dead. And I'd be on the podcast right now asking you if you would help me displace the body. Oh, dude, I think you know enough about me at this point where you know I would hide a fucking body for you. Yeah, but I mean, that there would be a lot of prep that would have to happen of like, I would have to tell you and then we have to be like, when can we get you on a flight? And then you're just like, well, it's going to be weeks. I guess we'll have to put them in your freezer for now. We've got to get you out here, pack a bag, bring some gloves. And I don't know, that would be, it'd be a lot of, it'd be a lot of legwork, like planning a trip, like a vacation. But I, I, I appreciate you, man. I, I, that's what I was going to ask is if, if you would do that for me. Yeah, of course. Absolutely, dude. Okay. All right. I feel like this... you, you've watched enough horror shows too. I feel like you'd have the knowledge of like, where, what do we do with this? Dude, th- there's only one right answer. You eat the fucker. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I thought. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. yeah, it's not, not bad. Not yeah. a bad idea. Dude. So this says the worst jobs are telemarketer and cleaner. Just in general, just a cleaner. You made me spit all over my fucking mic. A cleaner is the worst. I could, I mean, I could see that. God, what a life. Just day in and day out. I mean, yeah, in the hospital setting, I feel so fucking bad for those guys because mm. I go in there, I make a fucking mess. I get a patient up and they're like, oh, I'm going to shit my fucking pants. I'm like, you're fine. You're an adult. You're going to walk to the bathroom with me. We're going to go. Hold and it. then they proceed to fucking loose stool all over the place. And then I say, beep, boop, 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 boop. Yeah, housekeeping, come to the fucking room. I made a patient oh. shit their guts out again. Come clean it up. Awful. It reminds me of like, we talked about the housekeeping and being miserable. Like, actually, you know this because you just moved into a a new build as well. But like what the construction people do to a new build is insane. Where they just like, there's fucking cigarettes and dip cans and bottles everywhere. And there's just pieces of drywall thrown all around. And then I thought that they're the ones that cleaned it up. But there's literally like these at least for my house, it's just these group of women that would come by once a week and they would just be cleaning everything, like shop backing shit, cleaning stuff ap- after people that they didn't even work with. They were just, they were their own separate contractors. Like what a, what a shit job where people are just like throwing their shit around. They don't give a fuck. They're just littering all over the house for somebody else to have to come pick it up. It seems like everything's, you know, sub fucked up. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. what? You said it seems like everything is. And I said, fucked up. And that's obvious. This is world coming to. And that Power is the world obvious. Mama. All right, dude. I got a question for you. Please. Pet hairs. What's the fucking deal, man? With you ever had one hairs? of them pet hairs? Have you ever heard of that? Like the, you know, the really thin hairs you can't see that randomly you find them on your body one day. They're like four inches long. And you're just like, they're so easy. to. I've bink, never right heard out. that term. You I thought you were talking about like people having hair, like pet hair on the floor. No, no, you've never had one of those little, little skinny bitches grow on you. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess so. That I mean, but they're they're not like you said they're like they're like white. These little like tiny. I mean, they're just hairs. like they're so thin compared to a regular hair. Yeah, just I've never heard day, the term pet hair. I had a tickle on my neck, and I'm feeling, and I get a hold of this hair, and I'm like pulling all the way out here. It's like this <laughs> fucking long, and I can't see it because it's so thin. And I just dink, and it just comes right out. And like I'll get one like once every couple of years. I'll just have a random pet hair Greta somewhere weird. I think that's just because you had uh, this in your in your bloodline is a a golden doodle somewhere, and so you just just get those little hairs every once in a while. No, nah, dude, we got giants in our timeline. Baby. You you just have a bunch of preemies in your bloodline. We just we hold that preemie blood all the way through, baby, all the way <laughs> exactly. through. To the so next, I, yeah, to the okay. Next well, generation. then, no further questions. I thought that you would have. Yep. I thought this was normal. Maybe I just no. like admitted to something. Nope, it's just you. And we're gonna Yikes. have. Yeah, we're gonna have out of out of our uh, two person audience. We're gonna have only fifty percent of them message in and say that it is the the pet. They they have pet hairs as well. That is uh, estrogen building up in your system. You got to go mountain biking more. Yeah, actually, that would be interesting if you, as you became a man and crashed twice, if all of your pet hairs just fell off in that oh. moment. Oh, I crashed four it. times. Those oh, I just went over the handlebars twice. In a half mile, you crashed four times. Dude, I made it like halfway fucking back. That's like a three quarters of a goddamn mile. Oh, okay. You 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 just you went out a little over a half mile. Yeah, and then I said, you know what? This sucks. So that means you made it over a mile total. Well, we can, I walked we the last quarter down. mile. I gave up. Okay. Well, can, I tr- dude, I tried. We can, my we can edit. Best. We can edit I had that such part a good out. attitude. We can edit about that part out. It's, uh, dude, I'm, I, I believe in honesty. Okay. No, I, I like up. that. I'm not good at it. I don't really want to do it again, but I will. Tomorrow, as long as I can lift my fucking arm up, I'm gonna go disc golfing instead. A little less contact, you know. Is it your right arm that's fucked? Oh yeah. I don't think you're going disc golfing tomorrow, bud. Dude, <laughs> I, just, I saw you move. I, I just don't think ago. so either. I saw you try to put your arm on the table. I don't think you're going disc Ugh. golfing tomorrow, dude. Dude, it might feel better. I'm gonna fucking ice it and do some stupid ass physical therapy bullshit to Ugh. it. It'll be fine. What an awful, what an awful career. All right, what else you got? Uh, you got anything else this I week? Because if you don't, it's fine. No, I got, I got one. I Feed do me. have a question because you, I feel like you are the resident like sleep expert, and I don't know slow why down. you've been slow, given that title. But slow down. Yeah, to, that's, that's to me, proclaim from you. Okay. okay. To me, you, you are the resident sleep expert, mostly because I don't know fucking shit about it. So by default, you know more. Fair. Red light. Got? Sleeping with red light. We just got a sound machine that has lights on it, and uh, M was like, "Oh, you know, I heard sleeping in red light helps with sleep quality, or I don't fucking know something." And I had heard it too, so I'm like, "Okay, let's let's test it out. Impossible to say if you get better sleep quality or not, but what's the deal?" Okay. Interesting. So yes and no. So even though I may be the resident sleep expert in this pair of two, I'm not a sleep expert in general. So people do your own DYOR, but I'll tell you from the research that I've done, I actually have a red light next to my bed. So there you go. However, I would say that the, in general, my takeaway is red light is good whenever you need light before bed in order to avoid the bright white lights or bright yellow lights or blue light from TV. So, but I would say that it would be counterintuitive to sleep with a red light on because generally what the science shows is that the darker the room, the better. If you can get your room pitch black, you're going to sleep better. But like, for instance, I'll tell you what I use it for. I use my red light. If I'm reading a book, like I usually just read on my Kindle, which is like a paper white. But if I'm reading a physical book and it's dark in the room, then I'll turn my red light on because it's not going to be as stimulating to my brain. It's going to allow me to start developing melatonin and get ready for sleep. So that's the only reason I use it. And just as like, again, a less stimulating light if I need light in the room before I go to bed. There are people who are like crazy biohacker in their in their uh, social media descriptors or descriptions who will like have their entire house flip onto red light at a certain time at night, right? And the whole again, the whole point of that is to take away the stimulation of the bright white lights and the bright yellow lights. But I would I, not sleep with it on if that's what I you did. I did hear some interesting fact about kids and babies and sleeping, like their sleeping environment. Babies that have like really bright night lights or sleep with the lights on have earlier visual decay than those who sleep in actual pitch black because the waves of the lights 
are small enough that they can go through your eyelids, penetrate through your eyelids. So your eyes are still mm -hmm. receiving those light waves, whether you know it or not, which is super interesting I, to me. That's what I tell people whenever, like, I think that brings up an interesting point about just sleep in general. Whenever people, we all know people, I was actually one of these kids, like where I, we, I would fall asleep with the TV on and I would just leave it on. And I don't do that at all now. And I recommend not having a TV in your room, especially if you're prone to watching TV at night. But like, I'll tell patients that sometimes because I'm like, what's your bedtime routine? And they're like, oh, I'll just fall asleep watching TV. And I'm like, even though you're not actively paying attention, your mind is processing that information. And like the same thing with that light, right? Like even if there's just, if your eyes are closed, you can still see whenever there's like flashing frames, whenever they're changing frames and people are moving, you can still see that. Your body's still processing that. So you're just decreasing the total amount of quality sleep you can get. Mm. But yeah, I think the there's a lot of crazy things with red light that I don't know fully. Like, I mean, there's people who will red light treatment their balls to get like more sperm counts or quality or whatever. I don't know about all that shit, but there's a lot of people do a lot of crazy stuff with red light. Yeah. I, uh, I saw a video of a guy, anytime he brings a woman home, he has like a mode on his Alexa and he turns it on and it, converts every single light in his house into red light. And I don't know if and I it does that, does that sax or it's like, yeah, if I went home with a dude, red. which mm. I've been known to do before. Mm -hmm. So if I went home with a dude and I go home and he puts, turns on fucking Skyrim mode or whatever, you know, and all the lights go red and you know, I, I don't know how I would feel about that. It's too, don't it's, think I would it's like too it. much prep. It's too yeah. much prep. You've been, you get a little uncomfortable where you're like, I'm either going to have the best night of my life or I'm dying tonight. I think those are the two options yeah. where you're just like, this is, yeah, this is not going to end well or it's going to be the best night of my life. The people so. that, the people that have those red lights and they turn them on when they're bringing girls home for the bar, those are the same dudes that go to AlphaCon. What is that? Dude, I learned about this last night. I was hoping you wouldn't know so I could talk to you about it. <laughs> it was Al a big pause where I was like, please just tell me what AlphaCon is. AlphaCon, Alpha dude. It's literally, it's in the name. It's a, it's a oh, uh, conference it for a bunch of alphas? For alpha males oh. where you go and listen to other men tell you that you're a shitty person and that you need to do fucking 3,000 sit-ups a day to, to increase your revenue or... You know, you got to do this in order to eat a carnivore diet so that you can increase your sales by $10,000 a month. Just fucking weeb Dude, activity. Nothing's better than identifying so much with the term alpha that you seek out a conference for it. Where Dude, you're the like, tickets were $3,000. I mean, you're an alpha. You got there's the not cash. A, there's not an AlphaCon 2023. I tried looking it up because I wanted to see what it was all about. So that, if that tells you it's anything. Cause, it's because the alpha that runs the AlphaCon took all that fucking money because he's the alpha. He said, yeah, you fucking, that's right, you baby. beta cucks just gave me a hundred grand or probably more, whoever the fuck gave there. And he's like, I'm out of here. How many, you like, guys fell what for it. point in your life do you have to be? How low do you got to be to think, damn, I really want to go and listen to another man talk about how he's way more manly than me and he could steal my girl. <sighs> maybe you need that. Maybe that's like that, uh, uh, was it a 12 hour walk? How long was the walk? <laughs> uh, what was it? Yeah, I guess it it's was a 24, the 12 hour walk. 12 hour walk. Maybe it's like that where you're like, you just need that, that kick in the ass where you're like, my life is at a low. I need somebody to yell at me and steal my girl so that I know that I'm a piece of shit and I got to change my life. I think that if, you know, if anybody is struggling with that sort of stuff, how about this instead? Be comfortable with where you're at. Know you're doing your best. And you know, if you're not happy with where you're at, maybe just take some small steps to, to moving towards one goal. You don't have hey. to be fucking yelled at by David fucking goggins god i hate that guy too as the lord said or somebody did love thyself you know you're gonna get a long way if the lord didn't say that i apologize for misquoting you but sorry love big thyself. guy yeah, um, sorry big guy didn't mean to put words in your mouth yeah shit i didn't think about that dude i don't need to do anything for my shoulder the lord's got me man my shoulder's gonna be we feeling talked groovy about as that, hell. dude that's all you just don't believe enough Dude, I got that fucking belief in me, bro. I was one of those people in Elf oh God, that were singing along at the carols and bringing up the the belief level so that he could fly away in the movie. Dude, that's me, dude. I got belief, man. I'm already feeling better. I could do anything. Never, I've never seen Elf. Moving on. Um, so <sighs> what the we fuck? Are, we are we are jumping into. The five minutes to health, which is a segment where Corey and I come together and we decide what is appropriate, interesting concepts, thoughts for the week, news that we can chat about. 
in a span of five minutes. So this is this week's five minutes to health. And Corey, I know you're upset about the elf thing. We talk about it offline, but it is what it is, man. This is your five minutes to health. No, get the camera! Five minutes to health, baby. Okay. Hey, don't tan with beer. It's sad that I have to say something about this, but there's a new trend called beer tanning. People are, as it sounds, covering themselves in beer and then going out in the sun and tanning. Experts speak of the dangers of beer tanning, with the big one clearly being sunburn. There's just no protection from beer at all. Now, I'm not blaming the people that jumped on board. I, I don't know. Maybe I am, because why would you do this? But I would like to think that people aren't intentionally trying to hurt themselves. But either way, health gurus on social media need to pump the brakes. I've seen videos of people getting severe burns from listening to charlatans online because they stopped using sunscreen crazy. And now this. So I don't recommend getting roasted on Natty Light and then dousing yourself in Natty Light to go get roasted, even though it does kind of sound like the perfect circle and Darwin may appreciate it. Next. There was a lot of speculation around the cause of Bronny James's heart attack after he collapsed in the court on July 24th. Now, there was a lot of speculation again that this was caused by the vaccine and people were definitely up in arms about that. And it's a situation they knew nothing about, which is pretty typical, I guess, for these times. A recent statement released by the LeBron James Family Foundation reads, it is an anatomically and functionally significant congenital heart defect, which can and will be treated. Now, they didn't mention what that defect was, but either way, it seems pretty clear that there's a heart abnormality that he was born with that led to the heart attack. Hopefully, Everyone can let this young fella breathe and get back to a full recovery. He seems to be doing better as he was seen recently with his papa behind a pimped out Drake before a concert. Next, we all know what time it is. Just as September hits the calendar, everyone starts getting a little tingle in their loins because pumpkin spice is back, baby. Fall is around the corner, which marks Starbucks' revival of the pumpkin spice latte, which makes your tough guy friend wait in line behind 47 sorority girls for his basic bitch drink. Not my phrase, just borrowed it for the day. But the pumpkin spice latte is great, no doubt, but it's loaded with 50 grams of sugar. So if you want to know, here's how you can make it healthier. Don't order it. I'm kidding. Let's be real. If you want to still enjoy it, they typically come with three pumps of syrup, so easy. Simply ask for it with two or one instead. You can also choose a sugar-free milk like unsweetened almond milk or ask for no whip. Let's normalize making small changes so we can still enjoy the finer things in life. Next, not everyone wants to take a dip into a freezing cold tub, and that's okay. But if that's you, just keep scrolling. We'll judge you when you leave. If you are looking to reap the benefits of ice baths, you might look into these portable ice baths that are popping up everywhere. Before, these were really our two best options, paying two grand for a nice cold tub or trying to do it in the tub in your house, which unless you're shaped like a bowling pin, doesn't really work. I came across this portable tub called NureCover, N-U-R-E-C-O-V-E-R, it's less than $100, and basically you can think of it like a big, wide, trash can-shaped container that you fill up with ice and water to do your ice baths. Plunging into cold water has a ton of benefits like improving recovery, decreasing your gripping anxiety, and stimulating fat loss. Cheap, effective, and a trend worth hopping into, in my opinion. Finally, AI is not only something you use to write your boss an email on how to break up with them. AI has also recently been used to give people the ability to speak again. Two studies were able to use AI in brain implants to work with two individuals who lost their ability to speak from either stroke or ALS. I'll try to explain this so it makes sense. So these two women were unable to speak. They implanted these popcorn kernel sized bits into their brain. Then whenever they try to say something, the signal is read and AI on a screen talks for them in their own speaking voice, giving them the ability to speak again, where before there was literally no vocal ability at all, which is absolutely incredible. Everyone can stay afraid of AI if you want, but the quality of life improvements are undeniable, especially in these cases. So 
imagine having your ability to speak ripped away from you. And then this technology brings it back. Score for AI. Let me get those cans back on. You ain't never seen Elf. <laughs> Stuck with it, baby. What never the seen fuck? It. No, no, never seen it, dude. I'm not a got to show. Listen, the I'm kids. not. I'm not a movie guy. My kids love movies. My wife loves. I'm just not a movie guy. There's there's a there's a hand. I've watched more movies in the last year with my kids than I've probably watched my entire life, and that's no cap. Ooh, it just f- yeah. f- no no cap no but i can't no, think I'm of not, another I'm, it's not a movie guy i can't sit still for more than an hour so like the the length of film especially these days like oppenheimer don't know if i'll ever see that bitch i'd like to but in like three hours three and a half but you're definitely going to see barbie because you heard margot robbie's feet are in it that's right that's the exactly. the recent avatar movie took me three three uh three watch sessions but i got through it but I did split it up in three. Never seen three that six. either. I haven't seen it's Oppenheimer. Good. It's, I don't know. It's good. But I have to split split movies up, which bothers my wife. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Never seen Elf. Move on, dude. Right. If that ends the right, friendship, then it on. does. It's fine. We'll move it's on. It's all right. I'm moving on. All right. Let's uh, let's go. I like going uh, back to front. You know, I'm just a backdoor guy at the end of the day. Just so. like how you wipe? Yeah. Sometimes if I'm feeling crazy. I don't Ugh. know. I'm not going to get a fucking yeast infection. Ugh. UTI. I guess. Yeah, but you just got stanky nuts. Yeah, it's just, it's just, <laughs> how malicious do you have to be with your wiping to actually get shit on your balls? If you wipe, I, I don't want to talk about this, man. If you walk, if you, if you wipe back to front, you've got, you got, you got to go to therapy. I mean, all right, we're going to, we're going to have sponsored by BetterHelp. <laughs> Use code. Nah. Yeah, you got to go check the link in the bio for uh, something off of your first month. I don't remember. Um, Okay, let's talk. uh, Let's talk AI, because obviously AI can be scary for those who aren't educated on it. It it can be scary for those who are educated on it, too, in some circumstances. But there's definitely undoubtedly a place for it in healthcare, Right. And we're already seeing a lot of that. We're using AI to help increase our detection of breast cancer. We're giving people their fucking speech back. There's a lot of cool things about it. So if there's, I'm a huge proponent for AI in healthcare. I think that that's yeah. fantastic. And I think that's like what they're, what they're, because everybody gets really up, up in arms about, you know, like the Neuralink stuff we've talked about before and all this, but yeah. that's so far away in terms of, I mean, I guess I say so far away and that's, that's me being ignorant to the whole AI thing. But I mean, a lot of people that I, that I trust in turn that are in the field that I follow or listen to, you know, they say a lot of the stuff is probably overblown with the fears and, um, but the, the immediate, the immediate benefit in the health field is pretty remarkable. Like, I mean, I have even talked about before all this other crazy shit happens that people are speculating about, like they're actively working on helping people with Parkinson's with AI stuff. They're helping people with, um, the ability to, uh, regain a hearing, sight those sort of like sensation stuff like being able to to do that is is incredible so i think i mean clearly there's a lot of unknown especially for me and you who don't know shit about ai or know very bare bones about it but this stuff i mean it's cool they literally did brain implants and this lady who had a severe brainstem stroke at the age of 30 could not speak she's almost fully paralyzed can't speak because it paralyzed her vocal cords can now have a conversation with her loved ones. Like, can you imagine how crazy that is? Like how, how beautiful it is to be able to have technology that can, where, where you just, you know, at 30 years old, were stripped of your ability to speak. And it, there, there was some, they did make some notes that I couldn't fit into the segment, but they were saying that like, there is some errors of course, cause your body is sending signals that are saying, say the word jump. And this thing, I think it said, so it was somewhere between like, 15 and 20% error rate, which is kind of high. But like, you know, if you think about if somebody were to read you like two sentences, it kind of, if it was a 15% error rate, you probably still have a pretty damn good idea what the sentence is. It's kind of like, have you ever seen those? I don't have know, you ever man. seen those? I don't know. You, you're trying to say, let's go, let's go out jumping on the, on the trampoline. And it says, let's go hump on the trampoline. That's yeah, I guess not a good error word, but not have you seen error. those things where it like, they'll try and trick you and they'll, they'll, they'll read a sentence to you or it'll have a sentence that you read and the words are jumbled and you just read it normally. You don't even think about it. Right. And it's like, reread that. And you're as like, long oh, as the fuck. first and the last letter are in the correct place. Is, is that what, what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. But yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think it's, 
it, it's, it's exciting to see what comes up. And this one was what popped up recently that I had not heard of. And it basically just, it studied like from the AI was able to replicate what this girl sounded like too. And then able to like spit out the tone and the, the, you know, the, whatever the other, I don't, no, no, I'm not a speech like therapist. Affliction? But, yeah. The inflection? I like we, I, I only wear like... affliction, baby. Oh, well, yeah, I did say affliction. Thanks for catching me <laughs> on that, you fucking dork. Uh, Fuck you, Derek, at fucking come and go. Yeah, it's um, your fault. Uh, ice baths. Are you still doing ice baths? So, no. But the reason I'm not is because the one, it's well over 100 degrees almost every day here. And so I just personally am not going to go buy eight bags of ice every day to go do this. And if I were to keep it filled with water, I just don't have enough ice to even make a difference. So I could just take a cold shower. So I, I usually do cold showers and admittedly not every day, but, um, I did order one of these, um, portable ones because mine's like a big feed tank. It leaks. It's just, it worked and it works okay, but like, I can't keep it from leaking. It's massive. This was like a portable one that you can fold up and take away and move. And it has like a drain that you can actually get rid of the water and move it. It's got big ice cube trays and shit. So it's just, and I spent a hundred dollars plus on this tub. That's not even a tub. And so I'm going to find a different use for the other one. And I'm going to use this, this new one. But I think, again, I looked at getting some that were like, you know, two, and I was not going to spend this money, but they're like two, three, four grand for the nice ones. But you know, for something that you can just jump in and get out. I think these are pretty, pretty accessible. Yeah, not bad. And we've talked about the benefits before on yeah. the podcast, but briefly, do you want to jump through some of those benefits for ice bath? I mean, just the ones that I talked about are like the three biggest ones. Um, you know, the, the stimulating fat loss, the, the brown fat, which is something that's, that's in, in people's body. It also helps especially for like the beginning of the day helps jumpstart your adrenaline system. You just fucking feel ready to go when you get out of there. Um, anxiety helps with anxiety helps with recovery. So like people have heard of icing injuries, the same thing with like chronic inflammation, or if you're just exercising a lot can help boost that recovery and speed that process up. Um, those are kind of the three big ones. There's a lot, I mean, yeah. it helps with you. You'll see. And I was going to say this too, I just didn't have time in the thing, but like the reason you still see this shit pop up in social media is because like, even though it was a trend, like it, it works. And I've seen people who say like they were clinically depressed and they were able to get rid of their depression by consistently. And there's a lot to that, right? It's probably the consistent habit of like doing the same thing every day and being diligent, being dedicated to something like there's something with, to that as well, but they credit a lot of it to the ice bath. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of benefits, highly recommend people. And you can start off with a cold shower, do 30 seconds in a cold shower. It's hard to be it's anxious the same, during but... the day when you already almost die at fucking 8 AM. So yeah, I yep. get it. I get it. All right. So I, uh, I want to talk pumpkin spice because at my work, Dude, people are coming in with tall boys of pumpkin spice already. They're fucking eight dollar pumpkin it's spice. It's insane. Yeah, it's insane. I'm I, not. I I think we've talked about it before. I, and this, we're probably not the best people to talk about this because one, you're just not a coffee guy, and I don't like sweet coffee. So I, I, I every once in a while, I'll splurge and get like a latte. But like, if there's flavoring in the latte, it just kind of grosses me out. But people fucking love pumpkin spice lattes. The fact that it's seasonal and they get that little that little kick of, and you know what's funny? Let me look this up. You may know this, but pumpkin spice has, doesn't even have pumpkin in it. It's fucking cinnamon and nutmeg, not even pumpkin. Really? I see that. That's uh -huh. that's news. Let's see. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. What, what were you going to say about the the whole ordeal? I, I mean, I I don't know. I think more than anything, it's probably people are more excited about the holiday season coming around than they are about mm -hmm. the drink itself. And the so 40 pumpkin grams spice of sugar. Is fifty. Pumpkin spice is cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and ginger. Sometimes allspice, but nay on the pumpkin. There's no pumpkin. There's no pumpkin. Um, which I mean, pumpkin doesn't really taste like a lot, but it'd be kind of hard to put that in a powder form. But I think the general takeaway from that, it's pretty simple. It's like, I don't think people, people, there's like two camps. One that are like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to drink my three pumpkin spice lattes every day with my four Cokes and all this shit, which we've talked about. Just not good, right? So there's those people. And there's the people who are like, no, nah, fuck you. If you want to drink anything with sugar in it, you know, you should never touch sugar. It's going to put holes in your gut and all this shit, right? And I'm, and I mean, the show is called Halfway Healthy for a reason. We're Our in the middle. So like, we're in the middle, baby. And let's just try to, and there's, there's plenty of other avenues that you can hit. And if, if you're like one joy, in life because all you're doing is fucking slinging Vienna sausages at work is to have your pumpkin spice latte before you go in. 
maybe ask for two pumps instead of three, you know, I mean, that's and or maybe go to one, try it with different kind of milk, like just try to make these those little changes. And I think that's the biggest takeaway. It's like, just know that that's even available. Because I think some people don't want to ask or they don't know it's available. It sounds silly, but some people don't and you can just say, Hey, there's usually three pumps. Can you put less sugar in that? Can you put less pumps? You know, put no whip on it, whatever. Just like make those little changes where you can still enjoy it, but it's just maybe a little less, less, uh, less sugary. Dude, if you took 50 grams of sugar and piled it up oh, it's wild, and you man. took the same amount of cocaine and piled it up, Charlie Sheen couldn't even do that amount of cocaine. Like that is no. an I'd absurd kill a amount of, yeah. of sugar in one drink. Um, it's a lot. And also, I mean, okay, well, here, I'll, here's my argument, though. It is an insane amount of sugar, but if you were to take a, uh, what a what's a what's a typical, like, plastic bottle size soda, like 16 ounces? If you take, like, a Mountain Dew. Like a 12-ounce can? Not a can. I'm like a bottle. I think a bottle oh. is, like, 16.9 yeah. or something. But those those have, like, 48, 49, 50 grams of sugar in, like, a, you know, Code Red Mountain Dew or something. Like, it's Wild. insane. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, you've seen videos of people who, like, show you the can and they show you like how many cubes of sugar that's yeah. in. That's great. It teaches you that it's probably not good, but I think even better, how can you still enjoy that or enjoy a similar version of that? Right. And that's where we come in. I think that's just, yeah, good. Just good to know that you can ask for those changes at the, at the, the store. Yeah. At the Starbies. At the Starbies. Also follow up to that. Fuck you, Derek at come and go. God, I hate that guy. Coming Fuck for you, Derek. man. Um, Brawny, I didn't even know about that heart attack thing. So yeah. he's in a game and collapses on the court or what? So my understanding is it was a, it was like a, a summer game practice before he's going to USC and he just completely went unresponsive, just dropped unresponsive. They called it a heart attack. Like he quit breathing. Like uh, CPR and all the goods. And thankfully he was like, I think the building that they were in, there was a physician there or it was attached to a hospital or something. They were able to get him to the hospital within like minutes, like under two minutes or something. And of course, because you know, there's, and we're not on here to fucking have any conspiracy debates about any vaccine shit, but like there's been stuff out there about the vaccine causing some, like some heart stuff with, with younger boys. And so everybody jumped to that conclusion to say, the vaccine caused this kid to have a heart attack. And that was like the big debate for a long time. And, um, and then it came up, I think it was probably three or four days ago, whenever they said that he had a congenital heart, you know, heart thing, they didn't say what it was, but, and just researching it a little bit, it seems like it could have been a bunch of things, you know, it could have been a bunch of things, but it said that it was treatable and they were actively treating it and he seems to be doing better. So, um, yeah. Yeah, Fair enough. That's all. Yeah. That can, nothing else really to say. Yeah. That can general stuff's kind of scary. It is, man. It is scary because you just don't, you don't know. And like these kids, I don't know how old he is. He's probably 18, 17, something like that. But these kids who are like at that level, like they, I mean, you have the ability obviously to work that hard, but I mean, these, these kids, especially nowadays who are going, you know, who are playing basketball, football, soccer, whatever, like they're elite athletes who are playing every single day, multiple hours a day, pushing themselves to the brink every day if you know these heart defects they just kind of can pop up because of a, something like this something scary happened and then of course whenever it's lebron james's son and it gets elevated to the i mean to yeah, the of max course. you know of course this but, probably happens all over the place all the time yeah but that's the one we you hear about. about yeah you hear about people with like enlarged hearts who don't know until they have something happen right and then shit like that happens. my paternal grandmother died of a, an enlarged heart really yep i know it's a and it's a big thing that people you know with elephant elephantism elephantitis whatever like there's certain people who Dude, just like have i taught organs. you this elephantiasis elephantiasis that's i was that's what i was trying to recall i was trying to pull it into my head because i remember God, you, taught you don't me. listen to anything i say you're just as yeah. bad as derek at come and go fuck god oh. damn it well you can bring it back to me by talking about beer tanning because this Bro, sounds like I my fucking... type of beer tanning because i'm about to slurp some fucking ham lights out of your belly button mm. dude it just it it was something that popped up that just was so annoying to me. Cause like I said, I said, and like, I don't blame the people, I guess at a certain point you can, at a certain point you have to, right. Whenever it's like, Hey, don't, I, but I, I saw, it reminded me because two or three weeks ago, I saw a post on Twitter of a guy that said, Hey, everybody be careful. I just went out and surfed for five hours unprotected from sunscreen because somebody that I follow online just talked about all the dangers and shit that's in sunscreen. So they went unprotected. They got, really, really bad burns, sun poisoning, 
they've been like unable to move for multiple days, right? So at a certain point, you have to be able to take responsibility. I think this person did to be like, hey, I probably should have done more research or worn fucking sunscreen. And but the other side of that is like, I've, I've seen also a lot of people talking negatively about sunscreen or just like, standing out in the open sun and being like, this is how people should be. Don't pay these big pharma companies for supplying you sunscreen with all these chemicals and shit in it. And it's like, again, it's like pump the brakes. Like I, I'm not saying that all sunscreens are good because I don't know that answer. And there very well could be some few sunscreens that have bad chemicals in them or something. Right. But in general, like the sun will kill you. So it's like, you <laughs> like decide how you want to die. You know, do you want to put, a, a possible chemical on your body that could have a negative effect if it's in these massive doses or whatever, or is it like going to go out there and give yourself skin cancer? Or do you the want number to one can- certainly die from the sun? Yeah. The, 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 yeah. the sun is trying to kill you. Like it, it will. So like it just, it, so that kind of shit just bothered me because then they, they had this shit pop up where it's like cover yourself in beer and then go tan. And I even saw one thing that was like, I even saw one, uh, I think it was a, um, what are the skin a dermatologist, which just said like they, they were arguing like tanning isn't good just in general, like going out and getting yourself roasted. Like there's a fine line of like trying to get tan, right? Like, so then you add on throwing yourself with beer and they were like, you're literally cooking the liquid on your, as everybody knows, like when you're in a pool and you get out, like you just have that water that's like baking on you. You just feel like you get hot faster. Like same thing, you're just covering yourself with beer. It just, and also so sticky. So that's odd. That's odd as I fuck. Know. Y'all I, motherfuckers out there are weird. You're wild, man. You're wild. You're weird. Yeah. I don't know. So I don't know, man. Just don't you know, don't cover yourself with beer. As Corey would say, that does not get the healthy bird stamp approval. That does not get the stamp. Instead, give it to your drunk uncle or whoever. There's always someone in the family that will certainly enjoy it. Yeah. Maybe that's a, yeah, that's a, that's a sabotage there. Oh, you meant just like giving them the beer. I thought yeah. you meant like give them, I thought you meant like give them the idea, like tell your uncle to, tell your drunk uncle to cover himself in I beer mean, and the, go to the drunk uncle's probably down for some weird kinky shit like that, but he's just let him it. drink it instead. The way yeah, God he's, intended. He's the guy that you tell about the, the beer tanning training. He's like, I've been doing that for years, bud. I wonder if you like sat in a pool of beer for long enough, could you soak up enough alcohol to cause any damage or at least get a fucking buzz? That's an interesting thought because I I actually read something recently that talked about how you know how people take Epsom salt baths. Yeah, I've heard that like people have said that that's a good way to soak up magnesium, and then that was pretty. I think only to this people, but I think pretty sure I saw that that was debunked. Like you actually your levels of magnesium don't go up. You don't they, it can't soak that up through your skin. Now, I don't know about alcohol; it's probably a different pathway, but I don't know. It's like, I mean, how close is that to, it's like, that's somewhere between like drinking it through your mouth and butt chugging, right? Like laying in a pool of beer, maybe somewhere in the middle of that. Dalton and I are going to be an N of two study. Next time we're together, we're just going to get in a little tubby together. We're going to put our speedos on optional and we're just going to soak in some beer and see what happens at at the nighttime at night. Yeah, of course. And and if I don't end up pregnant at the end of that fucking night, it'll be a miracle. You're going to have a couple, you have a case of natty in your belly, baby. Yeah, let's go, baby. All right, dude, what an episode. Had a good time. I'm well, sorry that you were in pain the whole time. <laughs> I hope that you, I hope that you snuck some narcotics out of the hospital so you can have a little bit of a better day, but uh, I appreciate you being here and fighting through your, fighting through your abnormalities. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm going to go take a fucking nap is what I'm going to do. Hey, and this is a lesson to everybody. It doesn't matter how athletic you are. There's going to be some columns, right? There can, there's going to be some columns where you just don't, you don't, you don't quite add up. Right. And that is, it's mountain biking for Corey. It's outside Everybody, for Corey. Don't hey, do it, man. Yeah. On a bar graph, it's going down below the X axis. Dude, I'm going to make a little fucking clothing line called the vampire team or vampire squad or something, which is going to be dedicated to all you hoes that just stay inside. I like it. I like, like it. That me. could be, that could be in our, on our, our healthy birds merch line that we, that we're dropping 2029. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for hanging out with us. And we'll talk to you again next week. Love you all. Peace and love. (laughs) Got to pull up your arm. Fucking loser. (laughs) Bye, everybody. Fuck you, Derek.